Bit of a footballing genius. A genius who lit up Manchester United for 11 years. Nobody epitomised the swinging 60s quite like George Best. A boyish charm with a footballing talent that made him into a legend. Georgie was simply the best. Best. Oh, magnificent by Best. Best again. A glorious goal by Best. What a magnificent goal by Best. Best going in on it. Best. Oh, beautifully taken by Best. Now Best. Best. It's now by Sadler. To Best. Look at this with a little bit of acceleration. Oh, what a beautiful little chance to go. This is Best. Wriggling out space. What a fine set! What a fine shot! Georgie Best! Best! What a beautiful goal! Georgie Best! Best! Still Best! Oh, magnificent shot by Best against the crossbar! George Best! And his brilliant Best! It was, it was fun to me. Football was never a job. I, mean, I, I, I never played for money. I played because I loved it. Because it was... I consider myself more of an entertainer than a, than a footballer. The face of the football in 90s is being hailed as Georgie's natural successor. Ryan Giggs is soccer's new wonder boy, with the same golden touch and the same talent for goals and entertainment. The hero of yesteryear, the giant of tomorrow. Giggs. Still Giggs. Brilliantly done. This is Giggs. And that's absolutely brilliant. He is a different era, but George Best, were you nervous of meeting him? And... Yeah, I was. It was like um, when I first met Brian Robson and Mark Hughes. You know, you'd only seen him on the television, and you heard so much, a lot of him, and there's such legends, really, that you're bound to be nervous when you meet him. It was the same with George. Well, when did they start with the, he's the next George Best comparisons? When did you first hear that? Um, it was when I was first in the team, really. You know, I was a youngster, just like George was, playing number 11, you know, a winger. All the things that George was, really, when he was at Manchester United. So I think there's bound to be comparisons, but George was his own player and I'm my own player. Are there similarities between your styles? Um, I think there are, yeah, you know. We both like to take, take on people, score goals and um, generally entertain the crowd, really. But um, it is an honour to be you know, compa compared with such a great player as George Best. What have you seen of him? Just um, what I've seen on television, really. And um, I've seen his videos. And that's about it, really. Are you better than him? <sighs> I don't know about that. A long, way, a long way away from that, I think. Remember your, your first day at the cliff was it must have been a nerve-wracking experience for it. Uh, yeah, what they did uh, when I came over originally with a, another lad called Eric McMorty from from Belfast, who went on to play at Middlesbrough. Uh, what they did to make us feel at home, both of us, you know, coming from Belfast, they at the time they had quite a few Irish players playing yeah. at the club, and of course our hero, well, everyone's here in those days was Harry Gregg, the goalkeeper. Yeah. So they brought us and, and introduced us to all the Irish connection in, in the club, just to try and make us feel at home. So that was that was the first sort of memory, really, of meeting meeting Harry Gregg, this who to us looked like a giant, yeah. <laughs> two skinny little kids from Belfast, and that was their way of sort of trying to break us in. It didn't work. We went back home the following day. <laughs> That's right, you did, didn't you? Yeah, uh, yeah. We stayed. Uh, yeah, we'd never been away from home, and. And I think what put us up was watching some of the, the lads playing in those days. 
how good they were. I think we figured that we had no chance. Yeah. So we went back. Luckily, I <coughs> I came back. I came back a couple of weeks later. Did they make you feel welcome as an apprentice? Were you made to feel somebody, or were you very much left to your own devices? <coughs> Yeah, but it, it was difficult because there was so many. I mean, they had so many apprentices plus amateurs and, and kids coming and going, you, yeah. know, you, you know. You'd see a kid there for a couple of weeks and all of a sudden, you know, one day he wasn't there anymore. They'd been sent off, packed off home. You know. So there were thousands and thousands who'd never never made it. Jimmy McGregor. It's immaculate, isn't it? Immaculate. Right, let's, uh, let's get out. It's now 20 years since George Best was training day to day at Manchester United, but time hasn't tempered the warmth of the welcome he always receives. Testimony to his enduring popularity. Okay. Hi. Okay. Nice to see you. Pretty good. Come to your best, have a drink. Your mate. <laughs> Hello, my Hello, Georgie. <laughs> nice to see you. Right. Lovely, of course I can. I give him anything. Oh, I know. There you are, see. I'll give him anything I've got. There you are. Nice cup of tea, Dad. That's the best cup of tea today, huh? <laughs> this is this is really changed. When when I first came here, there was it was, it, it, it was a hot and Pitch is still the same. Most a lot of first division clubs be happy, but this is a this is a regular grind. You didn't really suffer from injury, did you? I think I think you find with a lot of great athletes, and, and Ryan Giggs has it. Uh, uh, I've always believed that a, the greatest asset a, a great athlete has is balance. Mm -hmm. And if you've got that balance, I think you tend to stay clear of injuries. And uh, he looks like the type of player. I hope I don't, <laughs> don't bring any bad luck on him, but he looks the type. He's got that great balance, and he, he rides tackles. And then consequently, he, he doesn't get a lot of injuries. So I didn't spend too much time in places like this. There were a few hard men knocking around in your day, though, weren't there? Oh, yeah, no, Chopper Harris and Tommy Smith and Norman Hunter. I mean, there was a few got stuck in, but uh, luckily, the only injury I ever had was really uh, the one that most players suffered from, and still do, is, it was cartilage. Uh, and that was the only thing. Uh, but luckily, not, not many serious. And, and also, another thing about it is, is like the weight room, we, we'd never heard of weights in my day. You never it's did. Probably it's changed, you, you hasn't never it, really? Weight. And now they've got a, a fully equipped uh, yeah. gym. But that's, that's, uh, that's one of the, thing, the big things that has changed in, in football. I mean, just looking at the, the restaurant in there, when um, pre game meals and stuff like that, you know, we used to go off to, to a golf club for a pre match meal. and. And in those days, every footballer had a, had a steak for, mm -hmm. for a pre-match meal, which is probably the worst thing you can eat because mm -hmm. it you don't digest it properly. I mean, my pre-game meal was a couple of sliced bananas and a bit of cornflakes. And I had your time in a way because yeah. it's the Gordon Strachan thing now. Well, isn't I, it? I, that was always that was what I, I always had. And it's just because it, it, it felt it, it filled me up, but it, it felt it felt light. So it was, yeah. uh, it's a terrible singer, isn't it? Must be Alex. Uh, another three points. <laughs> is, is he George like Alex? No, I mean, the, the, in many, many ways, the, the elasticity they have, you know, the balance. These are, these are gifts that people are born with, whether it's George and Ryan had that. Funny enough, I was just saying that, that's the one thing great athletes have, I think. Yes, balance. You balance. Know, and, and they don't get hurt. It separates them, yeah. They ride tackles, and, they, and he's, he's got that. And like I said, that one thing he did yesterday. On the corner fly. On the corner fly. I mean, it's, it's pure magic. It's, uh... Just watch his feet if you can. I mean, he's so quick. Look at that. That's breathtaking. That was worth the mission money itself. It was, yeah, you, 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 you walk a million miles to see just that one oh, little place. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, if you ask him how, how he did it, he wouldn't be able to tell you because it's just so natural. And that's what he does. And he does it week in, week out. More so, why did he do it? Yeah, why did he do it? <laughs> <laughs> tight, 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 tight. Tight, boy. This is where Ryan Giggs learned his football. Dean's youth club a stone's throw from his home. His natural talent was allowed to blossom alongside hundreds of other young hopefuls. Ryan had just moved from Cardiff when Dean's asked him to join. Today he still goes back to see friends and to help encourage another generation of youngsters intent on becoming the next Ryan Giggs. I was playing for my school, junior school, Grosvenor Road. And after the game, um, Dennis Schofield, who's a manager at Dean's, asked me if I'd like to come along and um, play for him. So I wasn't with any other team at the time, so I said, yeah, why not? So I went along and um, trained with the lads and played a few games. Okay. Played a, I played a game on the Sunday, got beat 9-1. So 
And um, yeah, so yeah, I'll play for you. <laughs> no, it went from there, really. Oi! You're not here to run the hundred yards, right? You're here to use a bit of skill. Now let's use a bit of skill. Just take your time <laughs> and try these little things as you're going through. Are you a good goal scorer then? Um, I scored a few. Quick? Quickish. Always on the left wing or where did you play? Left wing, just stood out on the line. That's it. <laughs> Shouted just for the got ball. it and ran. Yeah. <laughs> it's like now, isn't it? Kicked it and ran, yeah. <laughs> straight line, straight line, then you know who's behind you. Straight line, straight line. This line's the worst. Straight line. Were you, were you that much better than everybody else at that age, or were you just one of the one of the pack? Um, one of the pack, really. There was a lot of good players around at 11 who weren't good players at 15, and vice versa. But... Um, there's a lot of good players around then. Go! Get him! Go on! Go on, Ryan! Yes! yes! I told him when he was 10 year old, I said, one day, Ryan, you'll play for England. I didn't know he was all Welsh then, by the way. <laughs> he was 13 and he won the Isle of Wight Trophy, the best player on the island that year. And the, um, we played one match on the, uh, at the Isle of Wight and everybody. There was about seven matches going on on the fields that day, and everybody walked across from the matches to watch Ryan play. Where'd you get it from? Where'd you get the skill from? Where's it come from? Is it your father was a, a great rugby league player, wasn't he? Is it from him? Um, I don't know, both from mum and um, my dad were sporty people. Um, my dad played rugby for Swinton and um, he, was, he was a really good f rugby, pl rugby player. Also, mum played quite a bit of sport, so bit of both really I think. They say of your father he was very quick, is, is that where your speeds come from maybe do you think? Um, <laughs> yeah, well he, he was quick so perhaps he hasn't inherited his speed. Did you see him play? Yeah I used to go and watch him every Sunday um, at Swinton and um, he was really good, really good player. Had a bit of style about him did he? Yeah he was, um, he was different, he was, he was like um, He'd be in the game one minute and then out of it the next game, but he could win a game for you, like that. Bit like who, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Giggs has always had the ability to win a game by himself, always had what you might call natural talent, a bit like George. At the age of 14, he shone for Salford boys at Anfield, setting up the winning goal, pace and skill that had clubs clamouring for a signature. You were on Manchester City's books, but Manchester United got you. How? Um. Well, I'd been with Manchester City for three years and um, it came to my 14th birthday. That's when you can sign schoolboy farms and apprenticeship farms. And, um, well, no one asked me really to sign for Manchester City. And then along comes um, the manager and he just asked me if you'd sign for Manchester United, which you don't turn that sort of... So Alex Ferguson out. actually came to your house and said, yeah. knocked on the door. Yeah. Come on, tell me about it, what happened? Well, um, I'd only been down for trials one Christmas and I loved it. But I didn't really expect him to, you know, come down and ask me. But um, he just turned up at my house and just asked, you know, would you sign? So I was delighted and I signed. A very hard man to turn down, Alex Ferguson. And what a bit of business. Up steps Ryan Giggs and look at that for precision. Keenan gets in, Robson gets it away. Here's Giggs. Hughes up ahead of him, some terrific movement by both sides. And Hughes, the flag stays down. Mark Hughes now for Manchester United. A go! Alliston knocking it in to McClare. The little touch for Giggs. He's away again. Little ball in play there for McClare again. A go for Manchester United. Brian McClare made by Ryan Giggs. Sharp, that's nice from him, Cantona, and it's measured, the flag stay United, into the lead. Well the Norwich City players are furious, they're down at the linesman in this near side, asking whether it, Ryan Giggs is offside, he certainly didn't think so, but when he got through, you don't expect Ryan Giggs to miss, and he didn't. Giggs is away here. 
This could be two. It is. Ryan Giggs and Manchester United are in the box seat in a big way here now. Uh, what coolness and composure from the young man here. This one's just route one, isn't it? But when you've got the pace of Ryan Giggs, you've always got a chance beyond central defenders. And he finishes it beautifully. Darren Peacock gets sucked forward first of all. He spins on him immediately, Giggs. That gives him the space he needs. And he's finished emphatic. Six men in the wall. It's Giggs. And it's a brilliant goal. The players in the wall look back and ask how those in the Stratford end will be able to tell them. Superb strike. This is Giggs, and that's absolutely brilliant. And Ryan Giggs confirms his ever-growing reputation. On the half hour, Manchester United make the breakthrough in this FA Cup tie. And it's a goal which will be shown over and over again as the 19-year-old picks his spot on the run and fires a beautiful left foot shot beyond Alan Kelly. McClare got the ball forward, but look how quickly Giggs found the space away from Beasley, and what a finish. It's like a mini trying to catch a Porsche, and here comes Hughes, and that's the Rolls Royce waiting in the middle. I don't think George is like Giggs. I think um, it's, it, players have different styles, even great players have different styles, just like talking about Matthews and Finney. They're not alike, really. Great talents, but they're not alike. Not alike, I don't think so, no. They, they are themselves. Good players are themselves, and George was himself. And, uh, you know, Brian is, is himself. How good was this fellow, Jim? How good was this fellow? George? I, I'm always worried about talking about people who I've played against. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I don't think it needs me to uh, to say that. I think you've asked any player of my generation. You know, I think George had a talent, really. Um, but you can't say second to none. There was always there have always been good players about, but he was a great footballer. Probably the great thing about him was to I always thought it was his balance and the fact that he could score goals. Good header by Moore for best. And a great goal! The free kick from Buckham, the header by Moore, and best with time to draw a bead and hit that with deadly precision. Green off, back for Bernard. The aerial ball skills, well read by Fitzpatrick. Chop taking over, best breaking. And in a great position to break too. This looks bad. What a great goal, George Best and referee John Gow clapping his hands together and saying well done too. What a beautiful goal. The exact sort of goal that you expect George Best to score. Almost looked as though it was coming from the time he broke. Magnificent goal by Best. Sadler is up there at the near post. Good back in up. again has gone up this is the situation which made the Manchester United goal I don't think we can expect them to work the same move Tommy Taylor's header George Best this incredible ability that George Best has to turn to Kirkpatrick has given the corner and it's been taken George Best Sold two dummies and now has made a chance for himself. His hat trick! Charlton. And on the far side, Crera. Look at that for a pass as well. What a superb pass by Charlton. Oh, not such a good one by Paddy Crera, but in fact, uh, Bobby Charlton made something of it. Law lifting himself again. Gowling, best! And there it is! George Best! 3 2.
and Manchester United's comeback is complete. Well, when it was knotted down, John Jackson had no chance because Best was ready to pounce on it and put United into the lead. And now Willie Morgan. Querand and Kidd. Richardson. Oh, a good ball inside the fullback to Best. It probably went in off number five, Hunt. But it was made by that superb ball inside the fullback by Bobby Charlton. On to Best. And into the net. Ferrand. Burns making a run. Now Heard. Good dummy. Has Best up in front of him. This is Best. Wriggling out space. What a fine set! What a fine shot! Georgie Best! Number seven, the incredible George Best scores his 17th goal of the season. Willie Morgan being chased by Burrows. It's Patrick helping out. Now Edwards. Morgan, Crowland outside him on the right. Doesn't need to use him. Astor trying to set it up for Best! Oh, yes, indeed! How about that fella? Isn't that the most beautiful footballer you've ever seen? Didn't he keep his cool so beautifully there? Georgie Best then getting cr a crowd applause, applause from his own players as he scores the second goal. Did you have a, an inner belief though, a confidence that you were a bit special or, or that you were decent even? Not really, I was, I was quite happy with, because I I, when I played in the A and B teams at the, at the cliff, I always scored lots of goals. Uh, but it wasn't until I actually got in the first team and uh, then I realised, I think, because I found it so easy. Uh, I, I find it just just as easy, well, maybe easier sometimes, than actually playing in the A and B teams, where you kids your same age kicking lumps out of you. Yeah. Um, and that's, then I realised, you know, as soon as, after my first game, uh, uh, when I found it, I found it so much easy, easier. And I, I was doing basically the same things that I, I'd been doing when, when I was kicking a ball around the streets of Belfast. Mm -hmm and uh, just going out and enjoying myself. Basically one week I was playing in the, in the junior teams yeah. and then uh, I was playing in front of 60,000 people at, uh, at Old Trafford. Did you get any, any inkling about it though? Did Matt say, hey, you're doing well and you'll, you know, you, no, you'll not do for me or are you suddenly just thrown in? Oh, he, he actually, uh, we came in from training one day and I, you know, used to always look, you know, see with the first team, the team sheet was up in the thing, and I looked up, and I was done as a substitute. And I thought, I thought it was one of the lads was taking a mickey up me and stuck my name up. <laughs> and uh, but what he did, so Matt, <laughs> old Shrewdy, he had actually decided I was playing anyway. But because uh, a lad called Ian Moyer, the winger, was supposed to be playing, but uh, apparently he was injured and, and knew they knew he wasn't going to play. But they didn't tell me, and we went off to the golf club to have our lunch. And on the way back, in the coach, thinking I was going to be sitting on the bench just enjoying the game, uh, the boss came up to him and he said, uh, "You're playing today," and that was it. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't really have time to get nervous. You're suddenly in the first team at 17, and people are going, "Ryan Giggs, Ryan Giggs." That that was it happened really quickly, didn't it? Did did it surprise you? Um, yeah, it did surprise me because I'd only played a few games in the reserves. And um, I'd expected a few more games in the reserves and then gradually get into it. But um, I made my debut when I was 17. And it was somewhat of a shock, really. Did you get any inkling? What did the manager say to you? Um, nothing really. He just says, you know, just play as you have been doing in the youth team and in the reserves. And just, you know, play your own game, really. Are you the nervous type? Were you nervous before that debut? Um, yeah, I was nervous on my debut. And... Um, but I think um, because I started at such an early age and I've gradually got into it, nerves haven't become a part of it really. He has been compared to the young George Best as much in build I think as much as anything but it was Nobby Styles and Brian Kidd on the coaching staff here who made the comparison although Manchester United have rather tried to play it down since Alex Ferguson has said that he's the most outstanding talent he's ever worked with 
of his age. You don't strike me as the nervous type. Are you, are you quite level-headed? Quite, you don't suffer from nerves during uh, during matches or in the build-up to matches. No, I think the way to um, the way to do it is be level-headed, and you know just take every game as it comes. But when you've got 50,000 or 40,000 people, like you said in the Welsh game, do, do you get emotional at all? Do you, do you get wound up? Um, yeah, when the crowd, you know, start cheering your name and start cheering the team on, then you get wound up. It must be more than that. Every kid in the country wants that to happen to them. What's it like when they're, they're chanting Ryan Giggs? And um, it's obviously good, and you know, you want to do, the, do your best for the fans, and it lifts you somewhat. But um, as you say, you try and concentrate on the game. Obviously, you were a marked man. Didn't anybody try and do you, as it were, so to speak? Oh yeah, I mean you, you got clattered. I mean you, you're going to take a mick out of people like Chopper Harris and Tommy Smith. You're going to expect you're going to get you're going to get a smack. Uh, but again, I think uh, I think you find with, uh, if you're going to go after yourself, you know. You, yeah. You, uh, and if you're aware that they're they're going to try and, and, and do you, you'll, you you survive. Yeah. You know players like uh, and Giggs he's got that as well. He's uh, uh, he just he just wants to get on with it. I mean, and it's it in a way. I'm, I'm sure he would probably think the same. It's a, it's a compliment to you if someone wants to try and kick you. I mean, because it means they're not as good as you. Yeah. Did you did you have right back saying to you, you know, actually slow down with you or keep still or? No. The, the nice thing is with, nowadays when the, uh, when you when you meet them. I mean, uh, Graham Williams. I, I'm in my debut against, against a guy called Graham Williams. Played for West Brom. This is my first game, and also my internet, international debut. Uh, in Swansea, I, I played against him as well, and I bumped into him a few years after it finished. And he actually stopped me. And he said, "He said, best. He said, come here. He said, I want to see what you look like." <laughs> You're running past a fullback, leaving him for dead. What, what do they say to you? Do they get annoyed with you? Do they say anything to you? Um, yeah, you get the two kinds. Really. You get the ones who get mad, and you get the ones who, you know have a joke with you and say, "You know, I'll slow down. You know, it's it's hot like." But um, generally, you can have a joke with him about it, unless you're really taking the mick and they're not too happy. But generally, if um, they're playing well and you're playing well, you can generally have a joke and they try and, um, you know, put you off your game. You love doing that, don't you, taking the mick, though? Occasionally? Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> like what, slipping it through the legs and all that kind of thing? Um, yeah, the defenders ain't very um, happy if you put it through the legs, but... Um, You've got to do it now and again, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of Alex Ferguson, the way he's been with Ryan Giggs? Do you, do you applaud it? Do you agree with it? Do you think he's done a good job with him? I think he's done great, yeah. I think he's handled the situation perfectly because this is this kid's come in, he's, uh, you know, he really is a superstar. The same thing, but virtually overnight. I mean, he's still only 19. Right? And he's got the world at his feet and he's, uh, I think he's done a great job with him. And he's, and he's doing it sensibly as well because now he's letting them... Uh, well, it's up to Ryan if he wants to talk, if he, you know, if he doesn't. Uh, but he's letting them do a little bit more and, and getting them, easing them into it. Whereas he could have been flung in at the deep end and some people just can't handle it. I think he can't because he's, uh, he's a very sensible lad. Yeah. I think the manager's done a brilliant job, as I'm concerned, keeping him away from the press. And, boo, um, boo, boo. <laughs> what he's done is just um, let me concentrate on my football, really, which um, I think has worked. and. Um, kept me away from the press and I'm sure gradually um, it's up to the manager but um, gradually I'll talk more to the press it's up to him really because everybody made such a big thing of it didn't they Ryan Giggs won't speak what were you think of that, thinking of that time did you want to, to talk to everybody and say hey this is me here um, not really no um, I think I leave um, the talking to the older experienced players and just let me concentrate on the football really I think that's the only way to go about it. What about now? Uh, are you are you the nervous type in, in because presumably you've had not much experience of talking to people like myself? Um, Does it worry you, or are you looking forward to, to getting into this side of things? Doesn't worry me really, but it can be very daunting, you know, when our pressmen are asking you different questions and coming at you different angles. But um, we've had a bit of training at United, all the young players, so um, we've we've been. Um, it's hard to get used to it, really. I suppose you've got no choice, have you? No, not really, no. What about when things happen like you photographed on holiday in Greece? Does that annoy you, upset you? Um, yeah, it does, really, you know. You've um, had a hard, long season, 
and um, you've won the championship and you just want to get away from it really and you want to go two weeks and have holiday with your friends and just be a normal teenager and then you find out that you're splashed across the front of the papers you know it's not very nice what about you in, in, in your days did was the press attention as great or or do you wish some out and said right you're not doing this and you're not doing that or, or was it completely different here as we're talking about well i think it was different when i when i started playing because you know, because of the timing. I mean, it really was the swing in the 60s. I mean, it's it's a much much huge term, but it really was. I mean, long hair. They'd never seen a footballer with long hair. But I was just, I, I was the same as all the kids at my age. You know, yeah. I, I grew my hair long, and I was into music, and fashions were changing. Uh, and all my pals were exactly the same. The only difference was that on a Saturday, my pals were paying money to come and watch me do something that they dreamt of doing. Uh, so the, the the media attention was phenomenal. I mean, I was I was more in, in pop magazines than I was in, in newspapers because it was just that the, the time it was. It's just, I mean, that was a, it was a great era to be around as well. Did you love particularly that? the football? The football yeah. was fabulous. It really was. Did you love that being in the, the pop magazines and being in the papers? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, it was nice at first. I used to. I, mean, I was like oh, any kid. I I, I love seeing my name on the back pages, you know, if I was playing well or scored a goal, and that, but all the other stuff I, yeah, I could have done without, but it was, it was part and parcel, you know, you had to... Was there any way they could have protected you? Was there any way at all somebody could have grabbed hold of you and said, right, nobody touches him, nobody speaks to him, or what? was it not the, the situation at the time? It, it wasn't, no, I think it, that was different as well in those days, the, the media. I mean, we actually... <laughs> The press were actually friends. Uh, the, the, for, you know, for a long time, they became the enemy, really. Uh, and we, we used to go out with the, the press lads and have a, have a beer with them, and we, we all got in trouble in one way or another. You know, there was there was fights and incidents, but uh, no one ever wrote about them. You know, now, now, of course, you, you can't sneeze without it being. <laughs> well, I think it was Ryan Giggs in the summer, wasn't it? There was that picture of him on holiday. It's the first of its type, there's a picture of him sitting on a, a beach in Greece chatting to some girl in a long lens kind of job, mm -hmm. um, which I think gave him a bit of a fright actually, and it's the first of its type, but I mean, you had to live with that all the time, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I was, it was 24 hours a day, I mean, I couldn't move, I mean, when I built my house out in, in Cheshire, I mean, it was like, I, I was a prisoner in my own home, I mean, it, it became that bad. Uh, and I used to have to call if I was going out. I mean, the press were parked outside. I don't know what I don't know what they were expecting, uh, but just for anything, any any snippets they could get. And if I wanted to go out, I used to have to call a friend of mine, a local policeman, he'd come and he used to drive in front of me at 30 mile an hour, and I'd shoot off in the E type, so nobody could pass him. So I could I didn't didn't work because they always found me anyway. That's hard to cope with, isn't it? It's like a goldfish bowl the whole time, no matter who you are. Well, it is, and, uh, and particularly because, and which is why I, I say Alex Ferguson's done a great job with with, with Giggsy, because he has tried to protect him, and uh, I think it's very important. George Best wasn't protected, he was glorified. A footballer in fashion with an image that said success and style. George had a modelling contract with great universal stores. What he wore off the pitch, almost as important as what he did on it. Ask Ryan Giggs for a weakness and he'll say clothes. Fashion's a passion that he takes very seriously. He knows his Armanis from his Gucci's. He spends money making sure he looks right. He also harbours an ambition to appear on a catwalk. Maybe that's for the future. Right now, Ryan Giggs is Vogue. I take care of what, you know, I buy fashion-wise and uh, generally um, make an attempt to look good, really. When are you going to be a model, Ryan? <laughs> um, I'll get my football career off to the start first. Because Eric Cantona has been on the catwalk, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Um, he did some modelling, um, I think, in Paris for Paco Ribeau on the catwalk, so I wouldn't mind doing a bit of that. You're better looking than him, aren't you? I don't know about that. Right, somebody gives you a thousand pound in the shop now. Let's have a look. What are you going to buy? Come on, show me. For these prices, I don't know what I can buy, but um, 
<laughs> um, I don't know really for the for the summer. You know, buy a few Valentino t-shirts and use Aviatic shorts or something. And um, you're baffling me with signs. You know all the names, don't you? Yeah. Um, maybe one of these one of these suits. You know, just plain navy suit with a flash tie, maybe something. <laughs> no, this is flash. This is flash, I don't know. Yeah, so that's, that's nice, that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Is that because more the scene? I mean, I think the photograph that made most headlines was the one without that. Would you darling? Well, black and white it was, wasn't it? That jacket. Yeah, um, got, a, got a bit of stick for that, but um, yeah, I like to wear flash things, you know, individualist things, really. You spend a lot of money on clothes? Yeah. Um, tend to spend most of my money on clothes, really, shopping. No, flash jackets and that. <laughs> what about this for the European away games? <laughs> hey? We're gonna try it. It's one of those collusion ones, you know that? I think if we get a Russian team. Yeah. We got that to go with it. Front page news, something George knows all about. The similarities are uncanny, style with both men in whatever they do. Uh, hey George, are we all right? Okay, nice yeah, come in. This man, George Best, is today back in the side, having missed five games during his four match suspension and will obviously be anxious to turn on something a bit special this afternoon for this enormous crowd to appreciate. Aaron. Good ball to Kidd. Morgan's in the centre. Charlton's coming through. Best is there. And Best! A rank more for Northampton. Well cut out by Sadler. Perrin. And George Best through that run into his path beautifully. Book is committed and it's a goal! Charlton, through to Kidd, Best is in the middle and onside, Morgan is coming to bring support, Kidd, Best, his hat-trick, no, no! Brian Kidd, Best waiting hopefully in the middle again, cut out by Brooks but straight back to Kidd, Best! It's in! Sixteen minutes into the second half and George Best gets Manchester United's and his own fourth goal, 4-0 Manchester United lead. Back header, Kidd! Number five from Brian Kidd. Burns quickly in the game. And putting Best through, and here goes Best. It must be his fifth, surely. Yes, he's rolled it in. This incredible player. His fifth goal of this game is 19th of the season. Francis Burns, his first touch of the ball, strokes a beautiful through pass, and George Best does the rest. Nice ball from Best to Burns. Morgan here with a chance for another one. Saved, but it's scored now by Brian Kidd. Brian Kidd second. Burns to Best. Ten minutes left. This is Clark. Now, McNeil, and he's got one! Nobody will grudge Northampton their goal, or indeed McNeil.
Roberts coming to challenge Felton. Kiernan and Clarendon again to Best. Here he goes! And George Best sets a club scoring record. Six goals in a match. He used to try and make the, the goalkeepers make, the, make their decision first. I mean, I always, I always figure if you get them out of the way, it's easier. <laughs> if he's on the deck, he ain't going to save it. I scored the sixth, and I think it was still about 20 minutes to go. And I ended up playing left back. Just <laughs> I didn't want to score anymore. Large is there! Frank Large gets the second for Northampton. It's Manchester United against Southampton tonight. United's new young superstar Ryan Giggs in superlative form. Widely regarded as the best of his age group in the country. The best I've ever worked with, says Alex Ferguson. Young Giggs is the latest to be compared with George Best. In reality, he could achieve even more. Good evening and welcome to Soccer Night. And once you've seen the show, the only topic of conversation in your household will be the wonder of Giggs, Ryan Giggs. Anticipation mixed with anxiety for the first goal for the home side. And Southampton always threatening to make something from these breakaways. Excellent tackle again by Ince. Giggs. That was a body check and no more. And the free kick in the end is against Matthew Letizier. Now they're trying to push up for the offside. Linesman poised. And Giggs. And no flag. And Hughes couldn't get there. Tim Flowers can't believe there was no flag. Bruce. Cantona. Knew where Sharp was. Two on this side. Parker with a good cross again and turned wide by Giggs. Cantona was well aware of where Sharp was. Good return ball, but Parker was ahead in the chase and hit it first time. And Giggs turned it wide. The goalkeeper was clearly beaten, but the ball beat the post. Cantona. Giggs down the middle. Got ahead of Kenna. Hughes putting toward the middle. Real pace then from Ryan Giggs. Made all the difference. It was a good ball by the Frenchman. And an excellent run. Kenna caught a little bit slack. But he was unable to find the finishing touch. Frustrating for Brian Robson. In no position to do anything about this team's desperate need for a goal. Banger. Ince. It's a good run in front of him by Giggs, which helped create the opening. And a very good run by Ince. Comes down to Cantona. Flowers right on the six yard line. Fascinating run, super control from Ince, but Giggs running in front of him helped to create the opening, rather as in American football. And Cantona in the end with the shot. Onside, he came from... He's had a great knack of scoring important goals. Scored the winner against Liverpool last week. And running from his own half, he beats Michael at Old Trafford to give Southampton the lead. Goal in the 78th minute, inside, and the shot as the challenge was made. Wind will blow it in towards Peter Schmeichel. Good solid 
comes. Out comes McLean. Cantona, the early ball. Only Giggs, though, really up on the attack. Now McLean joining. Double delay. A class finish. McLean started it. Cantona played it through. And Giggs, look at the moment. They have delay, which puts Flowers off balance. And then the ball tucked inside Flowers' left hand post. Seven minutes to go. It's 1 1. Two in under a minute. The teenager is the hero of Old Trafford yet again. Look at the smile of the Welshman. Well up by Hughes that beat Moncal. And again, emphatic finishing. The young man is an undoubted star. I hate to say this to you, the first question is, how do we get to Old Trafford from here? <laughs> you better ask Giggs because I've no idea. <laughs> Left here? Yeah. Left How long have you been here? Um, about four years. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, three or four years. I've just brought a house down the road. Have you? Yeah. Um, mm. Not quiet. It's a bit like yours in the old days. It's, <coughs> it's like <coughs> you, an architect designing it, isn't it? Sort of, it's just a plot of land at the moment, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I did the same when I built mine. Just bought the land and then I made the mistake of letting the architect do it all. <laughs> yeah. uh, ended up a nightmare. Yeah. But I bought the plot of land and like, I gave him a couple of uh, things that I wanted and I said, you know, I, I wanted a snooker table and a, a toilet and a bedroom sunken and bath and all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I just let him get on with it. I don't think some of the neighbours weren't too happy about it. <laughs> But uh, I mean, it really was, it was a disaster. I mean, I ended up, I dreaded going home. So I, I just, I got rid of it after about a year, I think. Didn't you have any it. say in it at all while he was doing it? Didn't you say, hang on a minute? No, I had a lovely thing, you know, I had a, had a local school teacher came to see me once and uh, said to me, Mr. Best, have you noticed anything about your fish pond? I said, yeah, I said, all my fish keep disappearing. <laughs> and they said, yeah, the, the, the kids from school, when I was training, they were coming round and nicking him and they're selling him at school. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't that bothered about it, he just wanted to know if they were telling the truth or they were really my goldfellas. <laughs> but it was a nightmare, they used to come, used to come Sundays have picnics on the lawns and all sorts, it was a nightmare. So I went back to the digs, <laughs> went back to Mrs. Fuller. I suppose that's a good thing about you've never had to have digs, have you really, Ryan? No, um, we moved up here 10 years ago, so I've always been with mum. Does the cooking and the washing do, do you does your mum make you do your washing? Do you do your own ironing? Um, I hope you do, do some work ironing. around the house. <coughs> do my own ironing, that's what I am. <coughs> what about the cooking? Oh no, don't touch it. That's great, and you don't realise, you know, when you, you know when you're at, at a club, you really you're spoiled. You don't do anything, do you? When you're, yeah. you know, you're travelling, everything's taken care of, and that's right. all the arrangements. You only get so lazy. <laughs> Well, after training me off, like the meals at the cliff are brilliant. Yeah. So I was just saying that when we were there, I mean, it's changed. I mean, when we trained, that, there was nothing there. Yeah. I mean, you know, a brick bath, freezing cold. You used to come in after training, have a, have a quick dip. I'll tell you what, though, it can get, I hesitate to say boring, but once you finish training, what, what do you do? Just go home and relax, really. That's all you can do. Um, play pool, go shopping, that's about it, really. That was a problem, I think, when, with a lot of the kids when I, when I was playing. It's probably the same today, because uh, we, we didn't train uh, apart from pre-season. You didn't train any afternoons. A few, few kids. Well, I, I went back most afternoons, but the free time was the hardest. You know yeah, what to do. And we, we did the same. We played. It was either snooker or at the time. But Old Trafford did a, a bowling alley. That was our sort of hangout. Yeah. But it, it, the free time, you had so much of it, didn't you? No. Yeah. Yeah, you a golfer, George? No, no, I never, never get into it. Don't like parting with a ball. I like Dixie. <laughs> old Trafford is the stage for Ryan these days. For George, a chance to meet old friends. We had eight. Yeah, there you are. How are you, Ryan? I'm all right. Enjoyed that little spree right. today. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it's a just terrible one today. Yeah. Um, remind you of someone. <laughs> see you, man. See, see you, man. See you, man. All right.
Alright, love. Thanks. Hello, Hello, darling. I've seen you somewhere before, like yesterday. Oh, yeah. Alright. Mm -hmm. Okay, hi. Boss. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? We were just talking about you. We've just been talking. Certain nice things. <laughs> Of course, of course, good, always, good, always, always, good, always. That's good, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Do the blues eat here now? Yeah, we, uh, yeah, yeah. we used to go to a, a local golf club. We'd go there about 12 o'clock, have a light meal, a yeah. couple of games of snooker, and then head back here, get back here about two for the games. And then I used to, uh, downstairs, I used to, used to have a little coffee bar. I used to stand there with my pals until about a quarter to three. Did you? And the boss used to come looking for me, <laughs> quarter to three, where is he, where is he? <laughs> come in, just the gear on, sling it on and go out there. Yeah. I mean, in those days there was no warm-ups. No. I mean, you, just, you went on the pitch five minutes before the, for the game and you had a couple of shots and that was it. Medium well. Please. Cheers. 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 They'll always say, though, that it's rose-coloured spectacles. They were better players then. and I mean, is it or were they better players, better teams around? Well, again, I <coughs> like comparison stuff. But I've always believed in that great players could play in any at any period of time and uh, I mean people ask me could I f would I fit in today could I play today I think I could have could because cause I, I always played a free role but I, I wouldn't change that's the way I'd do it mm -hmm. still what about this 60s thing I mean it was rammed down your throat so it has been for so long hasn't it the uh Especially when you missed out on the title two years ago, didn't you? Did that get to you when they were all saying, oh, you've not won it for 25 years or 20 years? Yeah, I don't think it helped. It just added to the pressure, really. Whereas people should be encouraging you. You know, you know you'll do it next year, whereas they were just saying, oh, they've you know, done it again. They've not won it again. I think us winning it last year is just... The pressure's just gone now. Do you, know anything, football more. do you know anything about these 60s players, George and Dennis? Well, I mean, I know you know about them. Have you seen any of them or from that era? Just on, well on videos, yeah. Like, I, like, I like watching football videos, well. you know, the old, the old teams and that. What does Brian Kidd say to you when he's... Uh, well, Kiddo gives me, um, <laughs> gives me um, videos of, the, of goals he used to score. Must be a short video. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, Kiddo gives me, like... Videos of centre forwards, you know, saying you know you should be doing that, you should be doing this. So, which is good, like, because um, I think by watching the football videos, you can learn things. Who do you study? Do you study this man? Uh, um, yeah. Mainly, um, you know, centre forwards and wingers, just with the finishing, really. I think I've got to add that to my game, really, and um, get that over with, and then be okay. I think it's a, it's a great way of doing it as well. If you, you know, because I used to do the same thing. Obviously, there weren't that, that many videos around, but I'm going to watch great players as well and, and seeing when you see, you know, an, an artist at work. I mean, I still love it when I when I was a kid when I first came here. Real Madrid were the great side. I mean, that's I mean, unbelievable players, and they, they, they watch them here. I used to watch people like Puskas and Hinto, and De, De Stefano kicking in and the things they were doing uh, kicking in I, I was you know I was a 15 year old kid from Belfast seeing these players and, and I remember Puskas doing something and I thought I've got to learn to do that and he hit a ball and made it made it spin back to him and I'd never seen it before yeah. and of course the next morning I, I would like and I was trying to try and, and then that's that's you know, the same thing if you've seen people in the same way heading because I was, I was I was small you know so and I decided to improve my heading and when you watch yeah. players it, Great players. You know. Dennis was, was brilliant in the air. I mean, so you, you have to, you know. So when you when you see great players like that, you you tend to sort of mimic them and try and improve mm. you, which is which is the way you should be. Who, who were your heroes? Just Stefano, I know, was a big hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who domestically? Anybody you? Well, the greatest finisher I've ever seen. Um, well, two. I played with one. Oh, he's now a great pal, and that's Dennis. He was spectacular, but the, the, I suppose the greatest finisher in the number of goals was, it was Jimmy Greaves. I mean, he really was. It, it, it was like an art form when Greaves scored. Some of the, I mean, people think he, he was all tappings, you know, five, six yards, but he scored a goal here one year. 
uh, he, he, beat, he picked it up in his own half and beat about six players and rounded the kit and it was just, I can still see him drifting past people, he was, he was brilliant. Yeah. What, what but Di Stefano was the most complete I ever saw and Pele, you know, I was fortunate enough to play with and against him. And he, he was, he was, he was pure magic, he really was. But I think all around Di Stefano was a, was a nice. What about you Ryan, who are you, who, were, who are your heroes? Um, you play with most of yours, don't you? I play with, yeah. <laughs> Um, Russia and Sparky, the mayor also. Two different players. Yeah, um, when I, well, when I was young, when I was living in Wales, they were like the main people. Russia and Sparky, because of Sparty's United, Mark Hughes really. But also Ian Rush, the way he um, finished, scored the goals. Oh, he's brilliant, isn't he? Yeah. And to play with him is just brilliant. <laughs> Similar sort of situation, isn't it, really? I mean, because Ryan's gotten the team so young, as I did, you do, you end up playing with, with, with yeah. people, you know, you've, you've only read about and, and, and watched in awe, and all of a sudden, 17, you're playing alongside them. What is it like, that sensation of actually either running out at Old Trafford or scoring a goal at Old Trafford, or being, <coughs> being able to, to do things that other players can't do at Old Trafford? It, it must be an incredible feeling. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like, I can remember yesterday, I was, as I was walking out the tunnel, and looking up at the crowd, it was, you can't really beat it. Mm. And um, scoring in front of him, there's no better feeling. No better feeling. You're scoring, I suppose, in front of your friends as well, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh. I suppose that's why you say sometimes when footballers do finish, it, it's hard to, to replace that, isn't it? And it's, it's almost impossible to replace. Giggly says is you, can't, you can't describe the feeling. I was. I tried once to talk about my first game coming out, and there were 54,000 here, and we played West Brom, and I was I was 17, just past my 17th birthday, and <coughs> it was the, in those days the tunnel was the halfway line, and you sort of at the top, and I used to like to come out sort of halfway down the, 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 the line up, and of course when they see the first player, the, the player, the fans on the opposite side see you. And they start, and it just gets louder. And, and, and trying to describe it, it's like sitting in front of a radio with a roar, and just turning it louder and louder. And at the, by the time you get to the pitch, the place is just, uh, it's deafening. You know? What's happening to you inside? What's going on? Were you the nervous type? You, you must have had butterflies then. I, I never had, ever. Uh, and yet other players, it, Different players handle it differently. I, I don't know what Ryan's like before the game, but I used to sit down and read the, the match programme or, or a paper or whatever, and go and have a cup of tea with my pals and go in 10 minutes before the kickoff and get changed. Other players were actually ill before the game because you know they, they were so so uptight about it. They used to go in and be actually violently sick before they were done. I think um, the, the good thing is as well, um, me and George, we entered, entered the team at a young age. Whereas some players who um, come from other clubs halfway through their career get overawed by the field, you know, they played at lesser clubs. Whereas we've been brought up mm -hmm. in the surroundings of Old Trafford. That's why I always thought, you know, I was playing here when I was in the, in the youth team. And then when you go into the first team, it's just the same feeling, really. George was saying before that what he finds or he'd think going to bed at night, right, I'm going to try this or I'm going to not so much take the mickey or I'm going to. Is that what you're thinking as well? A sort of place of entertainment, if you like. Um, yeah, you, you know, you, you don't want the crowd have come along and played good, paid good money, you know, to watch you. So you want to entertain them, and um, you know, a few trick and you know, if you if you're winning, well, fair enough, you know, you can try and nutmeg a player, try and you know, <laughs> throw a few dummies like or something, like <laughs> throw a few dummies, um, but just to get the crowd on your side and back into it, really. There's nothing better. I mean, there again. It, because of the similarities and the, you know the winning <coughs> habit, it's great when you can do that. When you're when you're out there and you're playing with confidence and the, and the team are winning, it's lovely to be able to try things like that. I I, I I even did it when I played at Fulham with Rodney Morris, and he's the same as me. We used to. I mean, we ta we were tackling each yeah, other you know, for, for, this, for a bit of a, for a bit of like, to make people laugh. And our best. Hurdle beautifully over Tyler. <laughs> Took it off Rodney Marsh. Marsh coming back to tackle him. Best. That's the best. Oh my goodness, he hit the post. 
Best. Oh, what a ball there by Best to Marsh. And a beautiful save by Charlton Lee. Very nearly lost it. Marsh jumping all over Burrows. Another smile. And they're cooking up something. Well, the goalie will want a clear view of this. You can take my word for it. Best and Marsh will be cooking up something. And it almost came off in an unexpected way. Locked up by Best. Hit by Marsh. Marsh there to collect. Only one for the ball there. And a lovely ball for Best. Now can he do the same? There aren't too many around, are there, that, that have been excited, excited to sort of the football in public like yourself? And yeah, there's a lot of teams time. that, you know, um, that just the winning counts, and it doesn't matter how, how they went about it, as long as they won, you know, we've won the game, we've got the three points. Whereas I think here, uh, United, you know, players like Eric, um, Lee Sharp, Mark Hughes, they try and entertain the crowd, try a few tricks, if they don't come off, they don't come off. But I think the crowd appreciate, you know, that you're, you're trying to entertain them. And now Lee Sharp, Cantona making the early run, here he is! Lovely goal, lovely goal! Giggs, Nicole hesitated. Oh, Mark Hughes! A fantastic finish for Manchester United! Cantona, oh, look at that pass! Oh, that's brilliant! Great pass, great volley, great goal! Lee Sharp scores a quite stunning goal. Hughes with a bicycle kick, it's there. Sharp pinching it back from Dixon. It's a beauty! It's raining goals at high rate. Hughes, yes! Lovely goal. Well, it's just teed up for Cantona. Oh! A real cracker from Cantona. It's Giggs, Ince has carried on with his run, chance here for Manchester United, and still could be a goal, and it is for Lee Sharp. Lee Sharp marks his return to the side with a goal. It's Hughes. That's a fine try, it's a fabulous goal for Manchester United, and that may well be in the match. Does Alex Ferguson say make, entertain, or does he say win? Well, he's, you know, do it in the right places, but if it comes off, then it's brilliant. Was Matt like that? So Matt? Yeah, that, I mean that's a great point. I mean, there, there, there are times to do it, <laughs> or times to try it. I mean, if you if you <laughs> if you're getting hammered three 0 by somebody away from home uh, with five minutes, to, you don't start taking the make out of the opposition. But uh, it is. It's, it's trying to get that blend. If you can get that blend, but entertainment is so important. I mean, Ron said they're paying good money. These are the people that pay your wages, and if you can entertain them and make them laugh and send them away happy, that's what it's all about. If you can't play here, you can't play anywhere. <laughs> Even when it's empty, it's, it's, got a, it's got an atmosphere. It's just, the uh, place is just buzzing. And I remember when I, when, I f when I left United, I remember the last game, uh, sitting up in the stand afterwards and just looking out and sort of thinking of all the great nights and great games we had here. And of course, it's all back again. And I mean, <coughs> I was here for uh, the last game of last season when they won it and it was just... It was like putting the clock back. So, oh, it's a special place. Yeah. And even the opposition love coming here to play. You know, cause it lifts them. Yeah. Don't usually get too much when they get here, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, so it's a special, special club, that's for sure. And to be part of it is, is, is you know, we're two lucky men. Yeah. You know, to, to be part of it. And I, I still feel part of it, even though I'm not playing. Mm. You know. Can you hear what Alex Ferguson shouting to you from the line? Um, I think everybody else depends. can. What about you? Depends. Sometimes you can hear him, but you won't look at him. <laughs> yeah, turn your back. Yeah. We used to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. What is the man? Where did the Matt sit? What was he shouting from the line? Oh, he was. He, he was actually very calm. Uh, Jimmy Murphy was. Uh, was uh, he was the. He was the hard man. He was the shorter. Yeah, but uh, the boss seemed to take it all in his stride. I suppose inwardly he wasn't. But uh, Fergie is a little bit more. Animated, isn't it? <laughs> what do you do? Turn a turn a deaf one, do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> it's changed since you. Uh... 
Yeah, it seems, <laughs> seems weird to see all the seats here. <laughs> Some of them all standing up. Yeah. Certainly hasn't changed the atmosphere, has it? No. It's funny, when they yes. talked about all seater, you know, a lot of people thought it was going to change it, but it's, it's not. It's, no. Yesterday was a good atmosphere. I don't think we're sure if, you, if you're smacking them in here, they ain't going to be sitting down for long. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> screaming in the back of the net. There's nothing worse than going to places like Wimbledon when there's no atmosphere. Oh, I know. Yeah. Well, it was lovely when, 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 that, when I first played here. The most important thing was to win the toss. Yeah. <laughs> so you played it this way the second half. Yeah. yeah. The number of times they lifted us, you know, it's, it's just ph phenomenal. Moore trying his luck on the right, but with no more success. Best scooping it up for Moore. Morgan. Morgan with another chance. And having two chances there and not really making the most of either of them. Best. Still best. Oh, magnificent shot by Best against the crossbar. What magnificent skills to produce a shot like that from a situation as close as that was. George Best. And his brilliant best. Just under a quarter of an hour to go. Manchester United leading 2-0. And that's a beautiful ball from Best to Morgan. And Morgan's got a real chance here. And he's made it! Bobby Charlton. Best off in chase. Can he give Simpson the slip? A shot and a goal! A mistake by Webster! Goal by Best! Kemba, Payne and Best once more bursting on that scene and played there nicely by Karen for Best to hammer on and Jackson and he's there! Oh, a mistake by John Jackson and Best has scored again! Aston. Kid looking for it and getting it. Morgan wanting it on the right. Best in the middle again. McClintock shadowing him. Now Best! Best! It's now by Sadler! Sadler putting it home. Made for him. Unmistakably by Best. Dowling to Bobby Charlton. Best free on the left. Here he is put in by a good pass from Charlton. McElroy steps over it and Kid scores. No trouble. When did he start going to watch Manchester United? Um, when he was about 10, 11. He'd always watch them on the television, he'd always like them. And the stars of the past, obviously. But when he was about 10, 11, he started going to watch them. And he used to go and stand on the Stratford end, did he? Yeah. Was it always going to be Manchester United? Were they always his team? Yeah. Yeah, always. Does he help you around the house? No. <laughs> No, not at all. Does he not cook or wash up? No. No. Doesn't make his bed. Doesn't bring his washing downstairs to be washed. Doesn't do any of them things. Do you do it all for him? I do. He's a normal 19-year-old. Right, get the tea on. Come he on. He has quite a lot of parking tickets, I must add. Why? Because he can't park in a car park because it takes him three hours to get to the shop. So he tends to park right outside and then hands me a, a pile of parking tickets. Mum sort them out. <laughs> does, he, does he pay for his keeper? He does. How much does he pay you? Am I allowed to say that, Ryan? Yes, you are. He's nodding his head here. Well, he's not. How much does he pay you? He's got, it's going up, I believe, as soon as he's got a rise. Is it going up? <laughs> <laughs> he pays £40 a week. £40 a week? He does. That seems fair and to me. And he pays half of the phone bill. This, is, this was my brother's side. They have all these trophies and books. Mm. What about these? Look at this. Turn around here. This is, a, this is more Ryan gigs, isn't it? <laughs> which, is, which is the favourite there. 
Manchester Olympic. Actually, they're not too... Not too loud, are they? Not too loud, no. no. I think you've got your other ones hidden, haven't you? Yeah. That's, that's it. I think the famous jacket's in there somewhere. Is it? <laughs> yeah, that wardrobe's worth a few bob, isn't it? DME yeah. in there. Good grief. <laughs> Good grief. This is all the, uh, the memorabilia, I suppose. Some, and some of it. This photo here, I understand, is a photo taken when he actually signed. That's yeah? a good haircut, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it changed a bit from then. And Alex Ferguson actually came to this room, is that right? He did. Came to this settee. Yeah, there was my dad, um, myself and Ryan. And he told us that he was interested in signing Ryan. And my husband made a cup of tea and brought him a cup of tea in a Rolo mug that Ryan had probably had an Easter egg in. <laughs> so I died a thousand deaths when I saw the cup that he was giving him. And he just made a comment about it was marvellous what they put on cups these days and drunk the tea. What about uh, his girlfriends or girlfriends and, or friend? And Do you vet them? Yes. <laughs> do you? <laughs> do you? Yes. Yeah. I don't comment until he asks, <laughs> and if he asks, I tell him truthful opinion. Sometimes <laughs> he likes it, sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> the good looks, the glamorous image, and sheer footballing genius. George too always had obvious attractions. In his quiet moments, he admits now to feeling pure excitement when he watches Ryan play. He certainly had plenty of opportunity. I mean, I had people tell me about this lad when he was 12 and 13. I said, what a great player he was, he was going to be. And at the time, I hadn't seen him. I mean, and I've heard it so many times about you know, young players. He was going to be great. He's, and, and, and they just don't. But he's just uh, not only fulfilled it, but he's, he's getting better. There's been so many, uh, the new George Best down the years, haven't there? hasn't there? But is he the nearest? Well, I mean, I hate all that stuff because you just can't compare. It's like comparing Stanley Matthews to Tom Finney. I mean, it's a personal opinion. But uh, I, I, I hope he takes it as a compliment, and I certainly do, that they're saying that, because this lad, I think, has got the... I, I, say, I think he's the best in the world at the moment. I can only get better. He's, he's still only 19. It's frightening when you think... He's not going to hit his peak until he's 28. <laughs> that's, that's what they reckon. It's just it's frightening what he can do. Has it come too young for him, do you feel? Nah, nah, because he loves it. He enjoys it. So, good luck to him. I mean, I... I had it the same when, when I was 17. It's amazing the similarities, you know, because playing for our country at the same age and winning the Youth Cup at United at the same age and uh, his first championship medal at the same age. It's, it's, it's amazing the coincidence. Do you think it weighs heavily on his shoulders, the, the comparisons with you? I don't think so, no. I think a lot of times it has on players, but I don't think, he, I don't think, I don't think it bothers him one way or the other or, or even phases him. I don't think he, he even thinks about it. He just gets on with what he's good at. What was that quote you came out with, the, the, the one that people say that, what is it, he's not the next George Best, he's the first Ryan Giggs? He is. I mean, uh, what'll happen in a few years' time, the way things are going, they're going to start saying, a, a player will come along, they're going to start saying, this is the new Ryan Giggs, because I think it'll become that great. Do you think he'll stay at Manchester United for a while? Well, for the sake of everybody concerned with the club, I'd hope so. And I'd certainly not want to see him go. But he's, uh, I think he's, uh, he'll make his own mind up. I mean, if it was, if I was advising somebody like Ryan, if he wanted to try, his, take his craft somewhere else, I'd say, well, to try in maybe two or three more years and just see how, how things are at the end of it. You never know, you know, things change over the years. Uh, but at the moment, he's, he's playing it on the best stage around and they're back in Europe so I think anybody would be silly to think leaving United at the moment but as I say three years down the road who knows I mean and uh, <laughs> you think I mean he, he could actually play here for another four seasons go to Italy for three or four years and still only be 27 28 what would you like to do in the future football wise um, be honest would you like to play abroad would you like to to do all that um, I think I'd like to um, stay as long as I can at United, really, win, it, win everything you can. And also um, go to the World Cup with Wales. That would be my main aims. And get as many caps for Wales as I can. They're obviously really important to you, Wales, yeah? Yeah, it is, um, especially 
at this time, you know, people like Ian Rush, Mark Hughes, Neville Southall, maybe it'll be la their last chance. So it'd be nice to go to the World Cup. Would you like to go abroad? Are you the abroad type or are you, are you a, a home bird? I'm happy at the moment um, at Manchester United. I think um, five or six years' time, maybe, but um, at the present moment, with Manchester United. Tell me this. What is it like when there's 40,000 Welshmen at Cardiff Arms Park and you're lining up for your team? What is it like? What is that feeling like? I don't think you can match it with any other feeling, really. Um, 40,000 Welsh people singing the national anthem, lifting you. It's, um, you can't, you can't compare it with anything else. And it lifts the team, it lifts the crowd. And um, just to play for your country in the Cardiff Arms Park, with all them people watching you, it just um, makes you so very proud, really. And you don't know the words? I know a bit of it. <laughs> I know a bit. I hum. <laughs> Now there's no one better to show a young man a night out in Manchester than George Best. It was his playground as a youngster, and even then he had a feeling and appreciation for the good things in life. Always with that little touch of class. Are you accustomed to this kind of comfort, Ryan? Um, no, this is my first time, so <laughs> just enjoying it while I can. Are you a snob? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am now. He's, 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 he's learned very quickly to become a snob, yeah. Where's the fine line between sort of being part of... Um, I don't know, sort of public property, and actually sort of living the image, if you like. You must have done that down the years. Lived up to your image. Uh, well, I think one of, the, one of the problems I had, and I don't know if, if Ryan gets it as well, is that when you go out for a, a, a quiet, private evening, uh, most people are okay, but you only need one one idiot to, you know, to, you know, well, there's... George Best, so there's Ryan Giggs, you know, and in front of his pals or in front of his, his girlfriend or whatever, who wants to show that he's, you know, he's Jack the Lad. And uh, I mean, a number of fights and arguments I've got into through no fault of my own. Uh, I mean, I've, I've had my, my skull split by a guy who I'd, I'd never seen in my life before, just purely and simply because I happened to be there and, and, he, and he saw me. I mean, the guy could have killed me. Do you go to town? Do you put yourself in that position where you could get into trouble? No, I just stay um, local, really. Um, stay where my friends, friends are, people I know. You tend to, um, if you go to the wrong places, and as George says, you get the odd idiot. You know, says, oh, you know, there's, there's so yeah. and so, <coughs> and they want to, they want to argue with you or fight with you or whatever. Has that ever happened to you? Um, yeah, you've, yeah, I've had a few idiots come up to me and you know say. You know, all sorts like you know, you you rubbish and yeah. you footballers. I don't know, you think you are and all, that, which um, which I think is wrong. But um, you've got to try and keep a cool head and just walk away. Who's your minder on the pitch? Who looks after you? Um, I think Insy. He's always he's always first there if there's trouble. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's not just you. That's just <laughs> no, Insy looks after me on the pitch. I mean, if somebody does have a go at you, does he actually sort of? Have a word or yeah, choke he, them off. Yeah, you know, he'll say, you know, watch yourself, or, you know, I'll have you next time if, <laughs> if he says, if they do anything, but it doesn't normally happen, that. What about you, George? You looked after you, or didn't you need looking after? Well, no, no, we all need looking after. Paddy was my, he was the same Paddy, he was first in, and he took one. And, uh, I mean, over the years, and became known as my minder, <laughs> off the field as well. I suppose one difference, it seems to me, that between the two of you, you say you did mix with... High society, didn't you? Virtually, virtually straight away. Why were you in comfortable with that, those kind of people? Did you enjoy the glamour, or were they just happy to be with you? It just no, it just happened. You know, I love all sportsmen, and I suppose the one that really sort of it was a pleasure to meet that uh, one athlete that I was fortunate enough to meet a couple of times was Muhammad Ali. Uh, well, Cassius Clay when I when I met him, and he was just such a fascinating character. But just to be able to to meet people like that and be in the same room as them was, was, a, was a pleasure. No, the, 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 the biggest uh, compliment was that he, he knew me. Really? Uh, which, which was nice. So, I mean, I, I, I just met him briefly and, and said hello to him. And you, you say all stupid things, don't you know how much you admire him? Because he, this man was a, was a genius. He really was at what he did. So. Mm. What about you, Ryan? Who, who have you met that you thought, my word, what am I doing next to him? George. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, heroes that I've had, that I've seen on television, 
and I've um, been fortunate to meet people like um, Bobby Charlton and all the old um, 68 team. Mm. Also managed to meet um, Nelson Mandela, which is quite special because you know he's he's one of the most famous people in the world. And um, when we went to South Africa, I managed to meet him, so that was that was quite a thrill. Had he heard of you? Um, he said he had. I don't know. If, I think he was lying. <laughs> <laughs> he said he had, though. He's actually quite a football fan, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That must have been some experience. Um, yeah, that was brilliant. I was gobsmacked. Did you have a fan club? Yes, I got to a stage. That, I mean, it was phenomenal. I, my agent uh, in those days was, uh, was also Dennis Law's agent, Ken Stanley, a lovely man. He worked from Huddersfield. And we were getting, he had to employ, I think, three girls full time just to do the mail. I was getting 20,000 letters a week. I mean, no. It was, uh, it was just phenomenal. Yeah. There's going to be a bit of jealousy here. How many did you get? <laughs> um, divided by 20. <laughs> yeah. That's because the cost of papers going up. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Stamps. 20,000 a week? Yeah, it's some, some, yeah it, was, uh, it was just phenomenal. What kind of things do you say, apart from autographs? Any juicy ones? Um, no, I had my first um, bit of underwear last week um, <laughs> in a parcel, which was quite surprised. Yeah, um, from a bloke. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> which um, was quite embarrassing, but it was nice. Tasteful? <laughs> um, yeah, they were all right. <laughs> But it's been 20 different things now, right? Yeah, well, the, the, shop, the shops were here. God, the, the men's wear. Yeah. And my best pal had the hairdressers in the corner. So, yes. and, the, and our favourite club was downstairs here. Yeah. So we had everything in, yeah. the, in the same area. Yeah. <coughs> There's still a hairdresser's here, isn't there, I think, around the, cor around the corner. Yeah, I think, and, yeah for, and I think one of the lads still works there. He used to work when I was here. Uh, yeah. But this is all, this is, this is weird though. We end up having the whole, yeah. the whole length of it. You'd have loved it because there were so many shops for, for clothes. Yeah. All, all, and those are boutiques, they call them. But there's, and some great, well, we thought it was great gear in those yeah. days. <laughs> and then they had a little club down here, uh, which was owned by uh, the Demis, who were the big bookmakers here. Right. A place called Blinkers. And uh, that was our, another one of our little hideouts, little private clubs, so we did, yeah. it was nice, we didn't get any aggravation. But yeah. th this area in those days was, was, was buzzing, it was fabulous. Yeah. I came back here once, I was in Spain on holiday, and I came back, and uh, a, a newspaper reporter came into the, the hairdressers while I was in there. Yeah. And uh, he said, where have you been? I said, I've been in Spain. I said, I've, I've just come back, and I was leaving the next day, I was going back the next day because I, I just hadn't had enough time, I wanted another couple of weeks. Yeah. And he said to me, well, what have you come back for? I said, well, a haircut, of course. And the next day, George Best <laughs> flies in for a haircut. <laughs> just, yes. That yeah. was it. <laughs> another part of the myth that was <laughs> a load of rubbish. Yeah. Yeah. Right, do you want to go down and see our famous pub? Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's go. <laughs> <coughs> I, mean, I don't know what it's like today. <laughs> But it was such a dive. But the, the crowd that went in there, and then the boss, the guy that ran it, was an American. And poor old Sir Matt in those days, he used to... Because Manchester was like a village, and everybody knew everybody else's business. And uh, every so often the boss would get us in his office, and he couldn't get the name of this place right. He called it the Black Cow, the Black Bull, the Pink Parrot. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Brown Bull, but this is where we used to... After games, all the boys used to go there and have a nice steak and a few drinks. And stuff. Yeah. I don't know what it's like now, we'll soon find out. <laughs> Hey, alright? How are you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice to see you, Good, Good, thanks. What's changed a bit? <laughs> How are you? Alright? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Look at there's two superstars, we don't have a quid between us. <laughs> Gotta nick the balls. <laughs> right. Yeah. Giggs, you might as well sit down. You've got a seat.
see enough. <laughs> <laughs> we're level, we're level. <laughs> the competitive instinct will never die. A gig's and best trademark. These two men are just in love with football. To them, it's much more than a game. It really is an art form. Is this the best goal you ever scored? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was again. I was, I was playing for San Jose, which was my, my last team in America. The, the opposition were the team that had traded me to San Jose, Fort Lauderdale. And uh, we'd been given a free kick, and I'd said to the lad, just knock it to me. And I'd, you know, I just made my mind up, I was going to have a go for it. Is that natural? Is that, are you aware of what you're doing, or is it a case of, I'm just going to go for goal? Yeah, it's, it's a bit like, I mean, here I've, I've decided I'm going, to, I'm going to score. I mean, it doesn't guarantee you're going to. What's the best goal you've scored? Um, one against Blackburn. The night we won the league last year. Purely because of the occasion, and um, I don't think I've ever experienced a night like that again. And um, we were one nil down, and you know, the crowd were a bit low, so I got back to the feet again. Giggs gives a goal worthy of the occasion. It's one one. Well, they're all looking at Dennis Irwin. Up steps Ryan Giggs, and look at that for precision. It's got Ben done it enough then, but it's the accuracy you have to admire. They don't come any better than that, they really don't. Magnificent free kick. You, you say you've, you've got no regrets and, you've, <coughs> and um, you've, you've fitted about six lives into one life in a way. Would you, would you say not do the same to Ryan or don't do the same to Ryan or stay clear or what would you say to him? I know you say you don't give advice but what would you say to him? There's, there's no advice. I, you know, I said it before. I wouldn't give you. Just enjoy what you're doing, and that's just, uh, as long as you, you. I think you can do both. I think you can live hard and, and play hard. And, but as long as you're enjoying doing both, I mean, everybody makes mistakes. I made. I made more mistakes than anybody. But uh, so the, the whole thing is, that it's football. That, that's that's the bottom line. No matter how you look at it, the football. As long as the football's there and, and going well, you, you don't have to worry about anything else. It's great. What happened to George probably couldn't happen to you now because it, it isn't the swing in 60s and what have you. But do people say, oh, look what happened to George Best or don't be like George Best? Do they say that to you? Are you aware of that? Um, because of the comparisons on the playing side, the bounce line, make comparisons, comparisons off, the, off the field. But um, as George says, the, the boss has done brilliant looking after me. And, um, you know, I think he's going to take good care of me. I've, you know, I've got people who can give me advice. Whereas George, has, you know, just mentioned that he didn't, he didn't really have anyone to advise him. So I don't think, you know, I need to worry really. Would you like to live George Best's lifestyle, the lifestyle he led when he was 19? Well, I wouldn't mind being half the player he was for a start. <laughs> I would be a start. Oh, and it's Gex! George Best. So two dummies and now has made a chance for himself. His hand trick! Mark Hughes kicks to his right. Good ball. Kicks versus Poynton. Ryan Kicks! What a special goal that is! Making space for his cross and this! Neil Webb. McClare's there. So too is Robson. It's Kicks! That could be the one! George Best again. Getting past Robson. Still with Best. Anyone go and a goal! 